Hello my darlings, I'm Indigo Monroe and I hope you enjoy this video. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers. We slowly walked through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm looking room apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than the than either wing. Ladies first. She gives me an appreciative smile and the gesture, taking lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school library, but the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. There doesn't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to thin air, since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Aww. Aww. The origin, apparently librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Uh, hi, Lily. How can I help you? The voice is strained enough failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk while I was looking for it. A pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could in any way inconvenience by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> The girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression. And then she shuffles some more papers around the corner, counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, uh, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit a library perfectly. Oh, Lily! Did you get my message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right. They finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... I missed her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure. She notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot, where she does. Oh, no. I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. Er, Yuko, this is Hiso, a new student. Hiso, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hiso, right, Hiso. Pleased to meet you too, Hiso. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind, so she won't forget. Yuko. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hiso a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an, with an expression of abject terror. I... Please, Lily, I can't. I don't know where he could be, what he could be interested in. There's too much responsibility. 
how it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere. I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. This seems to work, at least partially, as Yuko seems to uh, not exactly relax, but at least looks slightly less tense. Oh well, I think about a third or fourth Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come the library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organize and shove them all. It's so troublesome. They waste so much. I wish I could quit this job. Uh, a very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I have those books if you... If it's alright with you. Oh, I would have those books if it's alright... If it's alright with you. My, my first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I, sun, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choices. I'll never be stuck for choice for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. A library. <clears throat> it's as if the call mood from the room. I had tea with Lily and snuck with us here. Unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease. Just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Quite a little further though. I discover a nice corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of the several beanbags. Oh. It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom room. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged for more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all, all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface. Before I know it, I'm walking toward the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introdu introducing myself, as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. <sighs> this is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see the part of her face that leaves. At least a third, if not half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second, I'm shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember that when I walked up to her, Hi, I'm new here. He's Sal Nakai. We're in the same class. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you.
Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It, it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit. Finally, she nods just a little. Oh, oh okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of them. So, er... Uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisa. She looks up from her book, stealing a, stalling a little before replying. I... I know. We, we are in the same... the same class. Her speech is stifled and so quiet that it is barely audible, even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name. I just have something to say. Really? It's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other. And here I am being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Yeah, you little bitch. Get over it. <clears throat> it's new for him. Be nice to the poor guy. In they go. It's okay. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her di direction. I sneak peeks of her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to be immersed in Life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. <laughs> she stands up forcibly from a beanbag chair, takes a deep breath, I... 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 I've got to go do something! Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she is no longer, nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that, knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see, or notice a girl run past here? Um, maybe. What did she look like? Uh, long dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yes, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. <laughs> oh dear, Yuko, would you excuse me? I better try to find her. Sh sure! Uh, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later, then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What? What did you do? Nothing. I was just looking for some books, and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was that I might have looked at her general di direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think. 
and she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder. It's just how she is, I think. Yuka doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casual only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. W what? Did that sound stupid? No, no. It sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us have anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desk really like doing them. Did you find a new books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing, but I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh, yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because... I'll just go to them. I fetched my stack of books from beside the beanbags where Hanako and I were sitting, and returned to the counter. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? I surprised myself with that, too. Honestly. At least when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else, and just checks out my books for me. I... I guess this is what they call tact. We're gonna save that here. And I'm gonna end that batch of recordings here today. Oh. Oh. All right, darlings, I will see you in the next batch. That was nice, very productive day. Huh. Alrighty, darlings, I'll see you next time. Bye.